Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 mere days away, we are facing the culmination of storylines nine years in the making across seven MCU titles. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Guardians Volume 2, Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, Thor Love and Thunder, I Am Groot, and the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. So yeah, there's a lot to catch up on for all of these characters. And while this may be sacred creed living in the minds of many of us, for many others of us, there's a lot of, oh yeah, that, yeah, him. So I'm gonna break down the full MCU history of the Guardians of the Galaxy and really everything you need to know going into Volume 3. Let's start with Guardians Volume 1. 1988, Peter Quill's mother Meredith dies of brain cancer and young Peter gets abducted by Yondu, leader of a group of space pirates called the Ravagers. Yondu and his crew mistreat Peter but essentially raise him as one of their own. Keep him around because he's small and good for thieving. Peter, as an adult, acquires an orb on Morag on a Ravager assignment from Ronan the Accuser. He is a Kree militant who hates hates Xandar. And really, he needs to get that orb in a deal with the mad titan Thanos for the Infinity Stone inside of it. The Purple Power Stone. Thanos has two adopted daughters, Gamora and Nebula, both of whom he adopted from civilizations he killed 50% of in the past. And he pits the two of them against each other, so they kind of hate each other. So Thanos sends Gamora after the orb, and Peter and Gamora fight for the orb on Xandar, while Rocket and Groot, a team of bounty hunters, try to claim Yondu's bounty on Peter for going behind his back, and all four of these assholes that end up getting arrested by the Nova Corps. That's a military authority of the planet Xandar. The four are detained and sent to the Kiln Prison. It is here where they meet Drax, a killer who hates Ronan and Thanos and everyone associated with them for killing his wife and daughter. And in this case, he blames Gamora for it. The five of these idiots end up escaping the kiln and they head to nowhere, a severed head of a celestial that is being mined for brain tissue by the Collector, Tanalir Tavan. The Collector explains the backstory of the Infinity Stones and his assistant, Karina, tries to grab the Power Stone and blows the place up. Up. At this point, the Ravagers and Ronin's forces arrive, there's a fight, Ronin gets away with the Power Stone, turns on Thanos, and targets Xandar. The Guardians end up teaming up with the Ravagers against Ronin, Nebula fights Gamora, but cuts off her arm to escape, Groot ends up sacrificing himself to save the others, Peter uses his mother's mixtape, the music is very important to these movies, to distract Ronin with the dance battle, while Rocket and Drax bust his hammer to free the Power Stone. Peter is interestingly able to hold the Power Stone, helped by the others, and Ronin dies. They end up leaving the Power Stone on Xandar, tricking Yondu into thinking he has it, and we learn that Yondu had abducted Peter on orders by Peter's asshole father. Rocket replants Groot's twigs to form Groot's progeny, later known as Baby Groot. It was a really fun movie, Howard the Duck shows up at one point, there's lots of Easter eggs, and then on to Guardians Volume 2. This movie is set mostly three months after the first film, but it has a prologue showing Peter's father, Ego, a celestial who can take a human form, hooking up with Meredith Quill in 1980, and we later learned that Ego had mated with countless beings seeking an offspring who could carry his celestial gene in order to help power his expansion across the universe. And we learn that he was the one who gave Meredith Quill that brain tumor. Three months after the first film, the Guardians are helping the genetically superior Sovereign, led by Aisha, fighting abolisks trying to feed on the Sovereign's precious Anulax batteries. For payment, they take the captured Nebula, and Rocket steals some of those batteries, so the Sovereign fleet chases them, but Ego saves them. Peter, Gamora, and Drax go with Ego and his aide, the Empath Mantis, to Ego's planet. Aisha sends Yondu after the Guardians, and the Ravagers find Rocket, Baby Groot and Nebula, but Nebula disables Yondu to favor his mutineers led by Taserface. But Yondu's loyal Kraglin helps them escape and they kill off the other Ravagers. Meanwhile, on Ego's planet, they realize Ego had actually killed off all of his other offspring and just wants to use Peter as a battery to kill the rest of all life in the universe in this expansion. Everyone rejoins to fight Ego and blow up his brain in the planet's core with a bomb made of those Anulax batteries. Yondu sacrifices himself to save Peter and earns a Ravager funeral. And we learn in a post credit scene that Aisha has has bred a genetically perfect being named Adam Warlock in a golden cocoon. Now the next time we see the Guardians is actually in Avengers Infinity War. The Guardians, now a bit older, come upon Thor and the massacred as Guardians, and we learn Thanos is on the move to get Infinity Stones. Rocket and Teenage Groot join Thor to Nidavellir to craft a new god-killing weapon, Stormbreaker, using Groot's severed arm as the handle. The other Guardians go to nowhere to find Thanos having already gotten the Reality Stone. He leaves with Gamora, and she discovers that he has been torturing Nebula. Thanos and Gamora go to Vormir for the Soul Stone, which requires Thanos to sacrifice someone he loves, and this is how Gamora dies. Peter Quill, Drax, and Mantis meet Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, and Peter Parker on Titan to fight Thanos. Nebula joins the fray, and they nearly beat Thanos, but Quill realizes Thanos killed Gamora and loses his temper, allowing Thanos to regain the upper hand and complete his stone quest, taking him back to Earth where he snaps, and on Titan, Quill, Drax, and Mantis all dust, along with Doctor Strange. Meanwhile on Earth, Groot dusts, 
Nebula is left behind with Stark on Titan, and Rocket stays on Earth with the Avengers. Now, during all this, in Captain Marvel, we learn that Ronan the Accuser had a past with Carol Danvers in the 90s, because Captain Marvel is set amidst all the drama with the Kree in the cosmic landscape of the MCU, drama that will continue to play out with Ronan's successor in the Marvels coming this November. But that's not really relevant to the Guardians of the Galaxy, necessarily. Okay, but on to Avengers Endgame. Rocket and Nebula join the Avengers' failed attempt to strike Thanos back, but we learn that Thanos had destroyed the Infinity Stones, and Thor decapitates him. Five years past. And the Avengers figure out time travel, and Rocket and Nebula join the time heist. So, streaming services like Netflix hide thousands of shows and movies from you based on your location. And while it'd be great to, you know, just head on over to the UK or to Japan to watch all this stuff, it's just easier to use ExpressVPN. We have been using ExpressVPN for years at New Rockstars, and it's something that we just really rely on to create all this stuff for you guys. With ExpressVPN, I can control which country Netflix thinks I'm in with just a single click. There are over 90 countries to choose from, so every time I run out of stuff to watch, I just switch to another country and unlock new shows. So for instance, say you want to watch Jurassic Park. You can't do that on the Netflix in the United States, but with just one tap of a button, ExpressVPN lets you change your location to Germany, which is apparently where you need to go to find the dinosaurs. And it's not just for Netflix. You can use ExpressVPN to unlock shows on other streaming services too. Like I like to watch Graham Norton on BBC iPlayer. It's free and it's only available in the UK. ExpressVPN is also super fast and it works on your phone, your laptop, even your smart TVs, so that you can watch the shows from the comfort of your couch or on the go with zero buffering. No wonder ExpressVPN has already been called the best VPN of 2023. ExpressVPN is a must have, so make sure you go to expressvpn.com slash new rockstars. You'll get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Nebula gets swapped with the past era of Nebula, who's still loyal to Thanos, and she sneaks in with the Avengers back to the present and reopens the time portal so past era Thanos and his forces and past era Gamora all arrive the present. Good Nebula kills evil Nebula, and Gamora turns against Thanos, and since Hulk has snapped everyone back, a portal opens from Titan, and Quill and Drax and Mantis all return. The Ravagers join in the Battle of Earth as well. They end up beating Thanos. Past era Gamora goes her own way, and Thor joins the Guardians of the Galaxy, which now include Kraglin, as they all head out to space. Now, the Guardians do show up briefly in Thor Love and Thunder. The movie opens with Thor getting back in shape, and the Guardians on a series of interesting-looking missions. We don't learn too much about them. The longest one we see is this battle on the planet of Indigar, but after the Indigarians reward them with these two screaming goats, the Guardians of the Galaxy go their separate way from Thor and Korg. Now, also in 2022 was released I Am Groot. These shorts take place between Guardians Volume 1 and Guardians Volume 2, and they show baby Groot's evolution from a potted plant into the adorable scamp who dances with amorphous beings and makes an art project for Rocket and the others. They're all very, very sweet. I highly recommend checking them out. But this brings us to last year's Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special that establishes the Guardians have settled back on nowhere as their new home. Mantis reveals to Peter that she was also a child of Ego, making the two of them half-siblings. Nowhere's security is overseen by Nebula and Kraglin and Cosmo the Space Dog, one of the collector's collections from the first film, a dog who is telekinetic. In the special, Drax and Mantis cheer up Peter by kidnapping Kevin Bacon from Earth. So, going into Guardians Volume 3, here's where things stand. Peter Quill remains the son of the Celestial Ego and the human Meredith Quill, who, for whatever reason, resulted in Peter being the only one of Ego's offspring to carry the Celestial Gene. He now captains the Guardians' third ship, the Bowie. Gamora is the branch time timeline variant stuck in the present after Avengers Endgame with no memories of the Guardians from Volume 1 or Volume 2 or Infinity War. And before Volume 3, she was not with the Guardians, but it is suspected that she might have joined up with the other Ravager pirate captains from Volume 2, including Stakar Ogord, Martin X, Kruger, and Mainframe. Rocket, whom director James Gunn has called the secret protagonist of this entire trilogy, is, reminder, not a raccoon. He's really the creation of, we learn, the high evolutionary Herbert Wyndham, the villain of Volume 3, and we're going to learn a lot of Rocket's backstory in this film. Groot is now a larger swole Groot form. A Mantis now feels more of a kinship with the Guardians as Peter's half-sister. Drax is still a big hilarious idiot. Nebula now oversees the Guardians' new home of nowhere. She has a new nanotech weave arm built for her by Rocket after she gifted Rocket Bucky's vibranium arm. Raglan also looks over nowhere carrying Yondu's Yaka arrow. He's joined by Cosmo, the space dog, who again is telekinetic. Aisha's creation of Adam Warlock, played by Will Poulter, is now hunting the Guardians down, and it sounds like he's gonna be a big dumb baby who was literally born yesterday. Now, Thor and other major MCU heroes are not expected to show up in this movie, but we will likely learn more about celestials and cosmic genealogy in the MCU, and James Gunn's long-lost Easter egg from the first two movies remains hidden, but will be decodable from location coordinates in this movie. So keep a sharp 
sharp eye out for those, and this will be James Gunn's final Guardians movie for the MCU, as he now heads DC Films for Warner Brothers. Zoe Saldana said that she's done playing Gamora, Dave Bautista signaled this is the end of Drax 2, so much like Avengers Endgame, we can expect some rare finality from a Marvel film. And my live stream breakdown and Q&A of this movie will be Friday, May 5th at noon Eastern on the Deep Dive channel, so be sure to subscribe to that, and you can support us by grabbing this Rocket Science 89P13 shirt at nerdriot.shop. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.